So in today's uh, in today's workshop, uh, like Kim said, we encourage you to bring out your resume so that you can edit along with us because this is going to be a step-by-step guide to writing your resume. So as you see things that you can already edit, you can already mark it up or change it as we go along, okay? Step number one, you should choose a template. And the tip here is to choose a simple and clean template. If you look at these two examples, so both of these are, are um, templates coming from Canva, right? So. On the left, you would see, yes, it looks plain, it looks simple. And on the right, you have colors which look nice and pretty, right? Actually, research that shows that most recruiters prefer a formal format than a creative one for a resume. So this is still the preference. Um, of course, it's different when you're applying for a creative job, but overall, uh, it's still preferred. Most recruiters still prefer a formal format than a creative one. So you're much more on the safer side by picking a clean resume template, a simple and clean resume template. All right. Step two. So let's talk about what's not included in the resume. Here are some of the things that, that we can already remove from our resume to make it really precise. Why is that? Remember going back to why we are creating a resume in the first place and why this is required in the first place because we want them to get to know us in relation to the job. So let's talk about the things. Uh, so we'll only include uh, parts of the resume that are essential to the job. So for example, bio data like your weight, height, birthday, they don't affect really the job itself, right? Unless you're applying for uh, to be a model, um, or an actor, usually in, in that resume, they would they would ask for, for those things like your height matters. Um, but for most jobs, for most jobs, your weight, your height, your birthday, your mom's name, your dad's name, um, they don't really matter or affect your chances of getting the job. So we're going to remove those already. Another thing that we're removing are references. The reason for this is very early on in the process is when they ask for the resume. They usually ask for references when you're in the final stages of the job of the job application already. So they will actually ask for this when it's needed. So listing down your references, their contact details already don't really affect the job application process as much in the very early stages. Especially, this is also a data privacy issue if you put the email address and the number already of the people who are your references this early because if your resume falls into the wrong hands, it's not only your details that are compromised, but also your references details. Um, having a statement there that it's available upon request is also not necessary anymore again because it's assumed that you do have references and then if they request for it it's already available so there's no need to put the references in the resume this early on in the process there's also i usually see this in some resumes as well where they certify that the above information are true and then there's your signature um there's also usually no need for that already because it's assumed that the, the information that you do put in a document that you submit for a job application are true. So uh, that, that that's not necessary anymore. I've seen some resumes as well that include hobbies, which is great. It's, it's a way for you to introduce yourself um, in a different perspective, right? Like this is what I do in my free time that sort of thing. But we want to focus the information in the resume to the ones that are relevant for the job because that's what we want the hiring manager or the recruiter to remember. Um, I've screened resumes where they put that they are like tennis, varsity, that sort of thing, or like that they like cooking. And the tendency is that's what I remember about the applicant and not really what's relevant about the job. So we don't want to distract we don't want to distract the hiring manager or the recruiter with information that's not relevant to the job. So let's try to remove that as well. All right. So those are some of the things that uh, we don't want to include in the resume simply because they're not necessarily relevant to the job, especially if we go back to our why, why we're doing this is we want to show that we can do the job. And these are things that don't necessarily add to that impression that we're trying to make. Do not forget this part. You need to add your contact details. I've seen, 
I have seen good resumes from people with experience already, but have forgotten to put their contact details. So I have no way to contact them at all, which is so sad. So please do not, do not forget your contact details. Here are some of the details that you should include. So your full legal name. I say full legal name because I I have gotten a, I have done a consultation with someone who is um, transgender and does prefer a different name already. Um, however, I do suggest that you they use their full legal name, whatever name is legal, because for background check purposes, um, that's what the company is going to use and for contracts as well. So whatever your legal name is, that's what you use. Um, please avoid using like a nickname that can't be uh, that can't be used for legal documents, right? Also, add your professional email address. Some of us may have created email addresses when we were younger and we used usernames for, for games, that sort of thing. Um, my little brother's email address before I suggested that he made a professional one had SpongeBob in it. So so please, um, please use a professional email address as your contact detail. So if you don't have one yet, you may, you may want to create a new one that has your possibly your first name or your last name or, or just like your name there in the email address and then you can add your mobile phone number your address and um, optional is if you have a website or linkedin you can add the link there so this is what it could look like if you'd notice we didn't put the uh, one miguel's full address reason for that is because back when we uh things were still being sent in the mail um the full address was necessary so that they can send you documents right they can send you documents physically to your house but since most of the uh, communication happens online now uh everything sent through your email address so the address portion of the contact details it doesn't have to be your complete street address anymore you can just also because that's a uh, data privacy uh, breach also just in case again your resume falls into the wrong hands you don't want your address going um, going everywhere and into the wrong hands right so what you can do is you can just pick the general area of where you live so probably um, just your city for example or the area where you or the area where you live so that's that's about as much information that's needed by the hiring manager or the recruiter they don't uh, normally need your full street address anymore. Um, they will ask for that when they need it.